struggle with binge eating? If I'm being honest with you, I have struggled with binge eating for probably, I'm going to say the better part of 20 years, but if I'm being real, most of my adult life. And it's something that no one wants to admit. No one is going to shout it from the mountaintops, but I'm going to shout it from the mountaintops. I'm going to keep it real in this video and tell you everything because the great thing, and this is why I'm shooting this video, is that I'm excited to say binge eating is no longer a part of my life. That's what this video is about. I'm going to tell you why binge eating is no longer a part of my life and why my entire appetite and my cravings and, and how this whole binge eating situation left my life. I'm going to tell you the whole story so that you can follow in my footsteps and change your entire life too. Tune in. Hey, you know what to do next. Make sure you're subscribed everyone and also make sure you hit that cute little button so that you're notified every single time I post a new video, which is typically going to be on Tuesdays and Thursdays, but you never know when I might decide to go nutty and surprise you on another day. So make sure you're notified every time a new video goes live. Buddy, Kelly Alexa here, fitness fanatic, serial entrepreneur, confidence coach, and most recently, crazy keto convert. That's right. I went keto on June 1st of this year and I have had crazy keto success. I have now lost 22 inches off of my body, 16 pounds, and have had the most wonderful transformation. And it hasn't just been physical. In fact, my next video is going to be on the benefits outside of just the physical transformation. And in fact, I'd, I'd say that what we're going to talk about today is going to be one of those benefits, which is going to be, you know, the appetite, the, the conquering of the binge eating. But certainly my whole life has changed. And one of those changes has been, I'm becoming a certified keto coach. I have become so evangelistic about how keto can change the lives of in particular women over the age of 40. If you are a woman over the age of 40 with metabolic damage, with hormone issues, and you can't seem to lose weight like I was, like I was just stuck in this pattern of not being able to lose weight for probably the better part of 10 years, keto and, and particularly keto combined with fasting is a miracle solution. And this is why I've decided after I had such tremendous success and I'm having such tremendous success to become a certified keto coach. So again, welcome to this video. Let's dive into the topic and get started. Okay, so before we get started, I do wanna make it clear, just because when I was doing my research on this topic and I feel a sneeze coming, I think it's gonna stop. Sorry about that. <laughs> I do want to make it clear, it still might happen. Uh, I do want to make it clear, I am not an expert on the definition of binging, but here's how I'm, I'm going to define it. Um, you know, I, I, I saw when I was doing research on this video, I was looking at other people who had done uh, videos on the topic of binge eating or emotional eating. And to me, when, when I'm talking about binge eating, let me describe to you all what my life was like and what binge eating meant to me. So let me be very clear. Um, I, I have never been diagnosed with an eating disorder. I have never been diagnosed with anorexia. I have never been diagnosed with bulimia. Um, what binge, what binge eating meant for me in my life is, um, I regularly, regularly ate in secret, regularly um, uh, would go out and purchase um, large amounts of food and eat in secret. Um, it started, gosh, in my early 20s when I would go and, and it was always, I don't know why, I still don't really understand the behavior that would, would cause, you know, I don't understand what was going on in my head, why I would do this, but it would be, I would get upset about something and I was always dieting. So it was always, you know, extreme dieting, trying to lose weight. And I would get upset about something, whether it was upset about my body, upset about, 
you know, not losing weight, whatever. And so back in the days when I lived in Chicago, it started as I'm frustrated, I feel fat, I'm gonna just go to Burger King. And it was usually this feeling of, screw it, I'm not, I'm not doing well on my diet, why even bother? And I would go through the drive through at Burger King and I would get a Whopper with cheese and fries and a Diet Coke and I would come home and I would eat it. Or I would order a large Giordano's pizza and <laughs> I would always, I would order it and while I was ordering it, I was so embarrassed that I was ordering a pizza on a Friday night by myself, I would be on the phone and I would kind of pretend that I had a boyfriend at home. So I'd be like, um, hey babe, do you want, you know, do you want peppers on your pizza? Like I would literally pretend that there was a boyfriend there with me. Did that every single time I ordered. And I'm sure that the people at Giordano's were like, this girl is pretending like she is. Because <laughs> it was the same guy that would deliver to me every single Friday. And I would pretend all the time. So I'd order a large pizza and and then they would deliver it and I would eat it and then I would feel so guilty. So you would have like, you would order the food, I would eat it in secret. I would have the shame of eating something so bad and then I would either run out to the garbage and throw it all away and then sometimes I would want to go out to the garbage and bring it back in and eat it but then I would think that was gross. So then sometimes I would go to the grocery store again and get something different. And so it was just like the running to the grocery store, buying kind of just big, big amounts of food. And I'm talking about like, sometimes I would go to the grocery store and just be like, it would be a sugar high. It would be, I'm going to buy Oreos and pop tarts and jars of frosting and it would just be like, I would treat myself to a sleepover and whatever I wanted, because I would say to myself, well, I'm going off my diet this weekend, so I'm gonna buy myself whatever I want and I'm just gonna give myself a hall pass for the weekend. I'm gonna buy whatever I want and because I live alone, like I was in my, in my brain, I was saying, how much damage can I do in a weekend? And I was kind of like nursing myself. I was like, I'm so upset, I'm so sad. I deserve to be able to be sad and, and have the Oreos, have the Pop-Tarts, have, have whatever it is I've been denying myself. And I would buy those things and I would let myself have whatever treats that I've been denying myself. So it was going out and buying all of these things, allowing myself to eat them and eat them even when I wasn't hungry, eating them to past the point of being full, eating them for no other reason other than they were there, almost eating for the reason of like, I, I have to eat them because I bought them and because I, I've given myself this window. So like, to me, that, that, that was like the binging. It was like this secret. It was, I can't let anybody know I'm eating this. It was, it was, it was definitely this secret. It was this horrible feeling of guilt and shame and embarrassment like if I knew that anybody if I would thought think that anybody knew I did that back then I would be mortified because I was just working out so hard and then it would always be that the following Monday would be extreme diet extreme dieting it would be extreme like egg whites chicken you know how can I punish myself and go into food penance to to break that and so Life just was this constant cycle of extreme dieting. And then when the binging happened, it was, you know, ordering pizza, going to the grocery store, buying donuts, buying, buying cookies, buying tons of, you know, sugary, crazy foods. Um, and when I had cheat days, it was having big, crazy cheat days and then having these binging cycles in addition but the binging things were secret they were just they were me by myself and I wouldn't tell anybody it would it would be me going through a drive through by myself um, you know going and getting a drive through piece of cake or going and getting a burger and and that would be in addition to a cheat meal that I'd already had and then I wouldn't tell anybody about that and then I would feel so guilty 
that then I would, you know, say, screw it. And, you know, it was just, it was something that would snowball. So this was, this was the way my life was. It was all food and thoughts of food and thoughts of cheating and thoughts of how can I, how can I eat? How can I satisfy what my sweet tooth is? How can I satisfy my screensaver just came on sorry like I can't describe to you guys it, I'm so aware now and what I mean by now is like in in this new keto life if you will that I'm in I'm so aware of how different my life is now than than the way that my whole life used to be because I'm not like this like I used to be at all. Like, I'm not ruled by food. I don't have those crazy cravings. I haven't binged once since June 1st, since I started this keto lifestyle. Not once. I have had no desire to. I don't think that way anymore. And, and here's the thing, I wanna be very clear to all of you. When I started this, this keto thing, I had no idea that my taste buds would change, my appetite would change, my cravings would change. I didn't go into this going, okay, I'm gonna do this and I really hope that this will change my cravings. I, I did not say that to myself. I didn't hope for it. I didn't plan for it. I didn't think that this could happen. This was the most wonderful, beautiful, amazing, crazy surprise ever. I never thought I'd be shooting this video and I'm shooting this video and I, I think if you're watching this, you must be realizing why I've become so evangelistic about keto, about the ketones that I drink and that I sell, about getting women to understand why they should be looking into uh, if they're hormonally challenged and age 40 plus and they haven't been able to lose weight like why why they should be looking into keto um you know like this is kind of a miraculous thing i just got my brother started no he's not a woman i understand that but like it's crazy it's just it's it's this amazing thing and and i will also say this too Steve and I were having, Steve is my husband, for those of you that don't know. <clears throat> I, it is such an easy, easier lifestyle than you think to transition into. So many people think that keto is too hard to do. And I will say as a sidebar, no, I don't think the whole world should be keto. Yes, it can be a transition. Yes, it can be challenging. Um, but I'll tell you what, ever since I've been on this, um, I, I drink alcohol. I enjoy my meals. There is just not any, any part of me right now that is like, oh my God, when can I go back to normal? When can I have a piece of bread? When can I have a piece of cake? I mean, sure. If you said to me, would you love to have a piece of uh, dark chocolate cake with white icing? If I sat here and really thought about it, like that's my favorite kind of birthday cake. Okay. Um, does that sound good? I mean, maybe, but does it like really make me go insane? No, I, I enjoy what I eat. I enjoy every day. I, you know what I had for lunch yesterday? I had um, two, a double cheese burger from Whataburger delivered with grilled jalapenos. I had a few fries from the, from the order. Um, I had a Diet Dr. Pepper. Yes, I still drink diet soda. Get over it. And um, what did we have for dinner last night? We ordered um, from our favorite restaurant. We got um, our mahi-mahi fish tacos. I got mine deconstructed. So I had, um, he got his with the, my husband is not keto. He got his normally with the um, tortilla. I got mine deconstructed, so it was on lettuce. Um, normally when I do it that way, I, I have these egg life wraps and I wrap it up 
and I just dip it with extra chipotle mayo, I'm out of those. So I, I wrapped up one in a siete tortilla, the other I just used with a fork and, and dipped in the chipotle mayo. It was delicious. I had some almond butter with a fork for dessert. And I mean, life is good. I don't, I just, I don't, I don't feel at all lacking. I don't feel like I'm on a diet where I'm like, oh, I just got to last one more day. And then I, and then I can have cake and then I can have pizza. Sure. When I see a commercial for pizza, I'm like, oh damn, that looks good. I mean, every time I see a commercial for pizza, I'll say that, but I'm just keeping it real with you guys. I do not feel like I'm suffering. I, I literally don't feel like I'm suffering. This has been the easiest lifestyle to transition into. My hair is sticking out there, sorry. Still getting used to doing this whole wavy hair thing. Um, and, and all of these other benefits have been amazing. And if, if you can just think about the fact that what I'm saying to you now, as somebody who used to be ruled by food, ruled by cravings, somebody who thought about food 20, excuse me, 24 seven, obsessed about food 24 seven, thought about, you know, when can I, let me just tell you, I mean, I'm going to tell you some really embarrassing, truthful things about my life. Um, as, as, as early as two years ago, year and a half ago, um, I was training with my trainer Blaine up in Austin, Texas when I lived there, uh, what was this, two years ago, two and a half years ago maybe. Um, and I would train really hard with Blaine and I would do like a really, really hard session with him. And this was um, when everybody used to, was talking about like donuts after leg day. And so I got into that whole thing. And so I would leave the gym, I would leave Gold's gym and I would go to HEB on the way home and I would buy a dozen glazed donuts and I would literally have six of them, at least six, sometimes eight donuts on the way home, in the car, on the, on the way home. Because I was, I didn't, I, I was, I just wanted to eat them. Like there was, there's just this like mental thing of not wanting people to see me. I wanted to eat it in the car on the way home. And then I would stop by the apartment complex trash can and dump them in there. And then I would count, I would think, okay, that's eight donuts times 200 calories each, that's 1600 calories. And then I would tell myself, I need to go for a 45 minute power walk. So I would punish myself with an extra power walk at like, you know, five o'clock in the afternoon when it's literally like high sun. And then I would fast for 24 hours. So I'd punish myself. I'd go for a power walk and then I would fast for 24 hours. And then, so it was like extreme, you know, binging on sugar. And it was always like sugar, binge, punish, you know, do an extra workout fast for 24 hours. But then what would happen is I would be like, oh, I can do that. And it would give me a justification to keep doing it. And so then I would be like, I want more, I want more. And so then I would, I also had this obsession. It was always sugar. It was always like forbidden fruit, forbidden fruit. And so then my mind was always like, what can I have next? What can I have next? What can I have next? It was sugar, 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 sugar. And it was, you know, Lenny and Larry's protein cookies. I wanted these white chocolate macadamia nut protein cookies. I was obsessed with them. And I mean, are you like picking up a pattern here? White chocolate macadamia nuts, Oreos, donuts, um, other kinds of cookies. I would get cupcakes. I mean, it was just constant like sugar, packaged foods, you know, you name it, this kind of cookie, that kind of cookie, um, anything from the bakery department at the grocery store. And I would go to the gas station and I would buy those Lenny and Larry white chocolate chip macadamia nut cookies and uh, something is in my eye, sorry. And I would get two of them and I would eat two of them and, um, I would also eat two of those in the car on the way home. And that was also about 1500 calories. And I would do the same thing. And I would say, I'm just going to have one, but I would end up having two and that was 1500 calories. And then I would, t I would punish myself and I would say, oh, well, you've had 1500 calories. And that would be what I was supposed to have for the whole day, 1500 calories. So then I would fast and then I would say, oh, well, you know, I did it once so I could do it again. And I just kept doing this kind of stuff. 
And, you know, then I would say, well, I really should have something good the next day. So I'd make a turkey meatloaf, you know, but I, I just kept doing this kind of stuff. And it just became a vicious cycle. But I became ruled by food. And, and I'm telling you, my days were constantly thinking about when can I have a treat? It was like I was like a dog. Like, when can I have a treat? And, you know, I was always frustrated with my body, but I was constantly thinking about food. And it was never about good food. It was just always about when can I have this treat and when can I have this and when can I cheat? And, you know, when I, um, screensaver, sorry. When I, it wasn't long that I was on keto that, that Steve, my husband, started to remark, he's like, you've changed so much. Like, first of all, he noticed the physical changes in my body, but he's like, you're just not snacking the way you used to. And, you know, my husband is very, very observant, but he just, he said, and he still says now, he's like, you don't snack the way you used to, you aren't, obs you know, and he's, he's not, he doesn't say it in a mean way, but he said, you, you just aren't the snackaholic that you used to be. And I will tell you guys this, when I first started keto, I was very sloppy keto and I was sugar-aholic keto. Um, I didn't know what to eat. I started making keto fat bombs because they were sweet. And I kind of, the first couple of weeks, that's all I ate was keto fat bombs. I made this recipe that was, um, it was like um, coconut oil and cashew butter with sweetener. And that's all I ate because of my sweet tooth. Like that was, that was, that was it. I would, I would eat like two, two of those. They were like a serving like this. And then I'd eat two more and I'd say, okay, I can't just eat that. And then I'd eat two more and then I'd eat two more. That's the way my sweet tooth used to be. But once you really go keto and once, so once I got myself away from that and once I started eating meals and pr like protein with fat, and then once I added the exogenous ketones, which if you watch some of my other videos, you'll see me talk about that. When you add the exogenous ketones, that is a remarkable extra layer too. But when you're really doing smart keto and making smart meal choices and you're eating protein and the right fats, and then you add on I feel very strongly about it, obviously, the exogenous ketones. That is a remarkable um, tool for curbing your appetite and the beta hydroxybutrate, I mean, is just an extraordinary tool for curbing your appetite and decreasing um, cravings. Everything changes, like the right foods, protein and fats. Then you add on that extra layer of ketones, everything changes. And everything in my life changed. I do not think about food the way that I used to. That, that girl I told you about at the beginning of this video, who obsessed about food, who thought about food 24 seven, who used to go in secret, who used to be like ruled by Lenny and Larry's cookies and donuts and sweets and who had dancing, probably went to bed and just dreamed about sugar plums and, and donuts and cookies. I mean, do all of those things still appeal to me? Absolutely, they just don't have any power over me anymore. Would I binge right now? No, I can tell you that right now, I would not binge. I can sit across the table from my husband at dinner and he can have bread. I've had so many people say to me, oh, I want to go keto, but I could, I could never sit across from my husband while he was having bread and, and I would die. I'm like, I've sat across the dinner table from my husband at an Italian restaurant and he was having these like ooey gooey like bread, pieces of bread, and he was dipping them in butter and, and like this melted butter. And it, it just was fine. I was having my Sauvignon Blanc, which is the you know lower carb wine, and I was having like this smoked chicken for dinner. I mean, like I eat good, yummy food. I don't feel like I'm wanting. I don't feel like I'm missing out, you guys. 
And the fact that I can post what I posted on Instagram today, a picture of me in this Lululemon top and Lululemon bottoms, and I'm not wearing in this in the picture, I'm not wearing a, a, a baggy top to cover up my middle. The fact that I'm ordering clothes and I'm wearing like a size six blazer when I ordered from Front Door Fashion, I'm wearing like sizes I haven't worn in 10 years. I, I took my measurements today. I lost another you know, half inch on my upper thigh, lost another half inch. Um, where did I lose it? Uh, I think on my waist. I mean, I'm just, I'm strutting my stuff. I walk into my closet. I'm, I'm wearing things I haven't worn in years. I'm 52. I feel better than I've ever felt before. It's, it's so worth it. It's so worth it. Um, I feel better. I'm, I'm never bloated. Um, I, I feel better. I look better. And, and I have to tell you this, this part of it, not being ruled by food, not obsessing about food, not having food have this power over me is huge because that guilt and that shame was an awful thing. Um, feeling like I couldn't control myself over food, feeling like, you know, this is a thing that a lot of women, and I'm not saying it's just women, but a lot of women deal with it and they hide it from their significant other. They're, you know, eating in secret and hoping that their husband or, or, you know, maybe it's their wife or their girlfriend is, is not going to see them eating. And, and, and a lot of times a woman can have a significant other who, you know, is critical of them. Um, I know that my mom, you know, my, my dad was always criticizing her for her, her weight and her eating habits. And when you, Princess Diana, you know, they, we've always heard that story of how, you know, Prince Charles was like, oh, I see we're getting a little, uh, you know, tubby around the middle. People just don't have any idea what it's like how one little comment. I still remember how my best friend at the time, when I was 19, she was 20, she made a comment about me. She told me I could never stick to any diet ever since then. That's why, that's when I started like eating in secret because I didn't want people to see that I couldn't stick to a diet. So um, binging and eating in secret and, and being ashamed and, and being embarrassed about what you eat, this is, it's not good. Um, this is why I wanted to shoot this video. This is why we should be able to talk about this stuff. But um, this was one of the things that I was so, so happy about. Now, do I know, did I expect this? No. Do I know why it happened? Um, I would say pretty simplistically, it's when you go keto, um, you're not eating insulin. My life before was, was all about eating sugar, eating um, sugar all the time and therefore causing an insulin response. And it was an endless cycle. You're chasing that insulin response and you're creating an insulin response and so you keep chasing it. It's like a drug. Um, and the more that you read, the more that you read and you understand, it's actually a chemical reaction in your body. And so when you remove that, you no longer have, it's like you're no longer chasing that carrot. Um, you're not chasing that stimulus anymore. Um, everything is different. I just didn't expect that. I didn't know that that was going to be this wonderful added benefit. And it's a wonderful place of power, I guess I would say. So, um, that's just what I had to share with you. I don't know if I've necessarily explained this in a way that is coming at you from a, a scientific point of view. This is really just my personal experience, but I had to share it because it is such a beautiful bonus thing, um, that I didn't expect. And I, I had to share it as a carrot. <laughs> 
<laughs> as a keto carrot to entice you further to consider if you've even been remotely kicking the tires uh, from a keto perspective. This is something else that you should be thinking about because if you've been struggling with binging, if you've been struggling with um, you know, cravings and having food ruling your life, um, it's not something I, I can necessarily say, hey, this is guaranteed, um, but it's highly likely. In other words, you do keto the right way, you do it the way that I've done it after I made the right tweaks in the beginning. You know, like I said, when I started keto, I was pretty sloppy, but once I made the right tweaks, everything fell into place and my life has been transformed. And honestly, that's what I want for you. Hey everybody, I hope this video was not only helpful, but inspiring to you. Um, and, and I do mean inspiring. I don't mean that I'm inspiring to you. I hope that the idea of being able to conquer your, your cravings, conquer having your appetite controlling you and, and, and conquer, um, you're binging, conquering all of that. I mean, it has been the most amazing thing for me in my life. Um, everything about this keto experience. I, if you would have told me back in April, late April, early May, when I was going back and forth with my doctor and starting keto, that I would have had my life transformed the way that I have had it transformed. If I would have known, I, I would have jumped head first. I would have embraced this more wholeheartedly. I, I would have just been so surprised um, to think that my life would be transformed the way it has been. But it has just been a wonderful, wonderful thing. And now this is, again, what I want for, for so many of you. So I do want to extend an offer to you. Um, obviously, I have become as I've shared before, unapologetically evangelistic about this. I am in the process of becoming a certified keto coach. But in the meantime, what I am offering is this. So many people are reaching out to me asking for help. They wanna get started, they wanna go keto. They're saying, how do I get started? What do I eat? How do I, you know, what should I do? How many calories should I, just the kind of like the basics. And so a couple of things. Number one, very simply, if you become a ketones customer of mine, I am a distributor of Prove It Ketones, which are the best on the market. I strongly recommend them for everybody. In fact, my husband, who is not even keto, takes them every single day, just like I do. We take them twice a day. I also uh, take the coffee every morning. He doesn't do the coffee, but he does do the ketones. So if you become a keto customer of mine, um, I do offer free coaching via text every single day. You can ask me any number of questions and you'll also get my free uh, Kelly's Keto Quick Start Guide, which I just finished. It's going to be an ebook download on my website. I literally just finished this um, last weekend. So I do have that available for anybody who would like it right now. It is kind of in ghetto form right now as like a Word document. Feel free if you would like that right now in its bare bones form. I'll I'd be happy to send it to you. Um, it's got tons of links, recipes, everything. Again, right now it's just in Word document form, so it's not super pretty. Inevitably, it's gonna be on my website in the next week, but I'm happy to send it to you right now. Just email me, kelly at kellyalexa.com, and I'll get that to you right away. Um, so those are my two offers. Become my customer, get free coaching. If you want the uh, ebook, you can email me at kelly at kellyalexa.com. Thanks so much, you guys, for tuning in. I'll see you next time. Everybody for tuning in to today's video. If today's video left you curious and wanting to learn more about keto, I have a slew of other videos you might want to tune into. Listen up, watch up, let me know if you have any questions.